Hello, I'm Naomi, and you're watching Naomi's Reptile Care. So, in this video, I will be telling you 21 uh, care facts and general facts about ball pythons. I am today accompanied by my helper, uh, Cyrus, my banana spider bull python. And uh, we will get more into these spider genes later in the video, but let's get on with this with fact number one. Fact number one, the size of ball pythons. Males can get upwards to two or three feet, like Cyrus here, while females can get three to five feet. The reason females can get bigger than males, or the reason they're supposed to, is so that they have extra room in their body for when it is time to make their eggs and lay the eggs. Fact number two, the size tank you'll need for your ball python. Uh, the appropriate size tank for a ball python would be a 40 gallon. Cyrus here is not in a 40 gallon. He's probably in something bigger than a 40 gallon. I do not know what size it is. I'll put in the measurements somewhere on the screen. Fact number three, be careful about what morphs you choose. There are some morphs with ball pythons that you should look out for. I know when you're looking for a ball python, you must think it's just something you can pick out a ball python that looks pretty and you're all good to go. But with Cyrus here, he was my first ball python and I knew nothing about the dangers of some of the morphs. I did not know that there were genetical defects that came with the spider morph, such as the head wobble and the corkscrew, which probably throughout this video you'll be able to see him do. The wobble can have many side effects. It basically makes it to where they can't have their head stay still. It's always wobbling and in some ball pythons it's uh, worse than others. Uh, Cyrus's here is pretty mild but it can cause them to bite themselves when eating. I've realized Cyrus has pretty bad aim when it comes to eating or striking so yeah. And another morph you should really look out for is the cinnamon morph. It's overall just a terrible morph, and you just shouldn't get it, especially if you plan on breeding. The more you buy these kind of morphs, the more you're promoting the sale and the breeding of them. So just don't buy them. I'm sure if people see the less they're bought, that that means that there's no point in breeding, breeding them if less people are buying them. But the cinnamon morph, I don't feel really comfortable with showing uh, some side effects to breeding them. So I'm not going to be showing that. If you are curious, you can look it up for yourself. But yeah, just be careful about what morphs you do choose. If you're certain on a bull python, make sure the morphs don't have anything that bad that comes along with the snake. Some sellers won't tell you if there is something wrong with the ball pythons morph, such as Cyrus's breeder, he did not tell us anything about the spider ball python or the spider morph when we did buy him. So make sure to ask or look it up. Fact number four, how warm their tank will need to be. So because uh, the ball python is from sub-Saharan Africa, they will their their warm side will need to be about 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Fact number five, ball pythons can be pretty picky eaters. I believe that is because in Africa where they live, they eat African soft birds, which are in the rodent family, but they do, they are different from our regular day mice. So, some ways you can fix that is you can go on the Reptilinks website, not sponsored, and they do have some scentings, one of them being African soft fur scents, so you can use those on some of your frozen thawed mice. I would not recommend giving your bull python a live rat, because that can cause up some real bad uh, 
aggression. So yeah, we were doing some things wrong when we first got Cyrus and first tried feeding him. If you try and feed your ball python in the middle of the day, that won't work. They are nocturnal uh, animals, so I would wait till night, turn off all the lights, maybe turn on a flashlight to replicate the moon, and put it off the ceiling, and then try feeding them. And make sure the mouse is always warm. Uh, I'll get to that on a different fact, but don't use live rodents only if it's a last resort and you've tried everything in the book. Fact number six. Ball pythons are not out and about a lot. I'm sorry if that does not make sense, but uh, if you're getting a flashy morph because you want to see it out and it strike that color and all that kind of stuff, that was terrible word amusement. I'm sorry. Uh, but they are kind of like the pet rock of the snake world. I heard that from a bull python breeder. And uh, so they're going to be in their caves pretty much all day. They are nocturnal species, so they're going to be out and about when you're asleep. Unless you're nocturnal too. At one point I was too, not judging you. You can have whatever messed up sleep schedule you want to. But that's probably the only way you're going to ever see them out. And yeah. So if I would recommend if you just want to get a flashy morph to see it out and all that stuff. I would just recommend getting a plain ball python, since they aren't going to be out and about a lot, unless you want to do some major breeding with fancy morphs, like I wanted to do, but then I didn't know I couldn't breed spiders. Well, I can technically, but I don't want to. You know, the morph is just amazing. No offense, but no offense. Fact number seven. So ball pythons only eat once a week, which is quite nice. So you can have a scheduled day for, if you own multiple reptiles or you want to, you can have a scheduled day for all your snakes to eat on one day like I have for my snakes. Though sometimes that schedule can get messed up when one of them decides they don't want to eat. Yeah. But, uh... They only eat once a week. The size of food they eat does vary on how big they get or how big they are. So currently, I believe uh, Cyrus is on medium mice. So I guess I do want him to get on large mice. Don't go on my shirt. No boy. I do want to put him on my large mice, but my mom isn't too keen on the idea yet. Yet I can convince her. <laughs> but, uh... I don't know yet if a large mouse would be good enough for his size, but yeah, just taking some tips from breeders and stuff to kind of find out. You can kind of just freestyle it, and you can also figure out what the breeder was eat, was letting your was uh, feeding your ball python before you got it. So you can kind of go off of that. So yeah. Fact number eight. They cannot be housed together. Don't even try. Don't even think about it. I swear, if you try and house your ball pythons together, technically I cannot do anything since I am in a camera. Well, at least to you guys, I am on, but I am in a different place. But just don't do it. They are, they don't get along. Only put them in the same tank if you're planning on breeding them and they are of the appropriate breeding age. Just don't house them together. When you're breeding reptiles, you only have to put the male in the female's cage for about one day, like shorter than one day. You can like leave them in for maybe like an hour or two. Just don't house them together, please don't. Let's get on to the next fact now, shall we? Fact number nine, heat pits. If you've ever wondered what were the tiny little holes, I don't know if I'll be able to show you on Cyrus, but if you've ever wondered about the tiny little holes on a ball python's face, those are its heat pits. So ball pythons, I'll get into this in a 
later uh, fact, but it basically helps them when they're uh, finding food. So when you are feeding them, make sure that the mouse is and cold, make sure it's not room temperature, make sure it's uh, like warm to the touch. Because if it's cold or not, or room temperature, it'll just, it won't seem like food to them. So yeah, just make sure, that's why leaving it in doesn't always help, because it will cool down after time. So that won't always help if it's not, if it doesn't eat the first time. So, yeah, that's how their heat pits work. So, yeah, let's get to the next fact. Fact number 10, enrichment. So, enrichment is basically what you put in your ball python's cage. I would suggest putting the water bowl, sorry, I, I blink out sometimes or I forget words. But, uh, they should have their water dish on the cool side where the heat pad where the heat mat isn't as long as a cave and you should also have put another cave on the warm side and i don't care if people say what a reptile doesn't like to climb or just won't climb give it an opportunity to climb like i have a little branch in the middle of cyrus's tank that also holds all his uh, vines for him to climb on if he ever wants to climb on it. So always give them an opportunity to climb because they'll take it. They will climb if you give them the opportunity. So yeah, climbing is also a really good thing if they're not burrowers. It can help them get some exercise in or something like that. I don't think it's the same for humans or the same for reptiles as it is for humans, but. Give them an opportunity to climb, because they're nocturnal, so you won't ever see them do it. So, you'll never know if they really like to climb or don't. Unless you put up a secure, unless you put up a night vision camera to try and spy on them and see what they do when they're asleep. Video idea. I'm not, I might do that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Fact 11. This is kind of an optional thing, but a day and night cycle. They don't need a day and night cycle, especially if you have a window in your room like I do that kind of lights up the entire room. Because a day and night cycle is just good for UVB or something like that. Since Cyrus is always in his cave, he doesn't get much UVB. He would if he went out a few times a day. But, uh... A day and night cycle, it's pretty optional. I just have one for Cyrus's tank because it came with the tank. So I thought I might as well just make use of it. Doesn't really matter to him. The light will be on when it's dark and he'll still come out. But yeah, it's optional. With some animals, they need a day and night cycle more than others. So yeah, you can decide for yourself if you want to have a day and night cycle for your bull python. Fact number 13, how ball pythons got their name. They are called the ball python from, because they are head shy. And when you touch their head, they curl up into a ball. Cyrus here is not very head shy. As you can see, I can boop him or pinch his head. He's quite used to it. Though curling up into a ball is their defense mechanism besides biting. They are head shy. They don't like being touched on the head. One time when I was at my aunt's house, my sister and mom went to go went to go hold Cyrus, and my sister grabbed his head. She is five, and uh, Cyrus bit her because he didn't like it. He thought she was a predator, and uh, it looked like a ton of paper cuts. Felt like one too. She was just really scared. But. Uh, yeah, don't, just don't touch them on the head. You can boop them every once in a while, but don't, don't always invade their space by touching their head. They don't like it, so just don't do it. I don't know if I should be encouraging it or not to find out if your reptile is okay with it, but you can probably easily tell or not. 
it's if they let you move them without flinching or something like that. So yeah, let's get to the next fact. <laughs> oh my. Ah, perch. Ah, that's nice. Okay, fact number 14. <laughs> you can probably tell I'm looking at a list. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, fact number 14, take them out on sunny days, or warm days. They are from Africa, so they love the warm climate, or their use, or that's what they're built for. So, take them out on a nice sunny day, help them get some vitamin D, help their bones a lot. If you don't, believe in calcium. But calcium helps them with their bones a lot, so always put calcium on their rodents. But, uh, it's just really good for them if you take them outside on a really nice day. Maybe I should do that. I, I, I'll see the weather today. And if I do take my reptiles outside, I will post a short about it. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know, okay? Like, dogs are monsters. But, yeah, just take them outside. Next fact. Fact number 15. They like water. Cyrus here loves baths. Wait, do you want water? Yeah, I didn't think so. He doesn't want the water bottle. But, uh, like, give him a water dish that's big enough to where they can soak in it. You should also do the same for lizards. Like, give them a nice water bowl, maybe give them a bath when they're shedding. Well, you should do that if they have some stuck shed. But give them a bath every once in a while, but don't do it too often because that can cause scale rot, especially if their humidity is too high. So always watch out for that. Fact number 16. This is something uh, maybe some not new reptile owners might know, and or probably do know, but for some beginners, you probably don't know this, but ball pythons are actually the smallest type of python compared to the Burmese, the green tree python, and the carpet python, and the list goes on. But they are one of the smallest of the ball pythons, so yeah, that's kind of cool. And yet they are one of the biggest beginner snakes. Oh no, that's a lie. That's a lie. I'm sorry. I made that one up. I, not the fact, but the part about them being one of the biggest beginner reptiles. Let's just get on to the next fact. I, I barely even eat. Wait, I have eaten breakfast. I need lunch. Okay. To go along with the fact... Oh, dang it. Okay. Fact number 17. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, to go along with the fact of the heat pits, they do have very bad vision. That's why they rely so much on their heat pits when searching for food. So, yeah. I don't understand why they have bad vision. I bet it has to do with something with the heat pits. Yeah, probably. I would guess so, considering I'm here connecting the two. I'm an idiot. I'm not an idiot. I'm an idiot. Okay, let's get on to the next fact. Fact number 18. Oh my gosh, we're about like four, three or four facts away from the end. Hmm, this went by fast. Kidding, it didn't go by fast at all. Not for me, at least. But, uh, fact number 18. They are constrictors, which means they squeeze their prey to death. Though, they don't know, most of the time, their prey is already dead. Uh, a lot of people, such as my father, before I owned reptiles, thought that because they were constrictors that that meant that they didn't have teeth and that's why they, uh, constrict their prey. I don't know why they constrict their prey, but they do. So, yeah, don't confuse it with them not having teeth. They do have teeth and they do bite occasionally. You've been a person once. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. If he would have been anyone, I would have been fine with him biting my sister, and which is what he did. You're a good boy. Love you, Reagan. But you can be annoying, and you deserved it. You deserved it. I'm, I'm a good sister, okay? Occasionally. Fact number 19. 
so it, they can live up to 30 years. So if you're not looking for a reptile that can that you're going to take care of for a long time, if you're looking for something more that's going to last 10 or 20 years, bull python will not be the right thing for you. He's probably going to live till I'm 40. I'm 11. But he's one year old. So he's probably going to live till I'm like 40. So I'm prepared to take care of him for a very long time. So if you're not uh, willing for that kind of commitment, uh, I would not suggest a ball python for you, maybe like a leopard gecko or something. I will be doing a leopard gecko care video next. Mm -hmm. uh, next fact. Fact 20. Oh my gosh, we're almost to the last one. But uh, they are a slow species, so they won't try and zip out of your hand the immediate immediately after you try and hold them. Though when he gets the zoomies, he can be pretty fast. For him, at least. He's not as fast as my coin snake, so... Yeah, I'm sorry, bud. Well, let's go on to the last fact. Fact number 21, the last fact. So this goes without saying, but... Handle your freaking reptile. Handle it. I see too many people who don't handle their reptiles and then chalk it up to the reptile just being aggressive for no reason. Like, my aunt's friend's husband got a boa constrictor. I'm not going to judge him. I do want a boa constrictor, but I don't know his past experience with reptiles, but uh, he never handled it. And it's an adult now, and he's looking for a new home for it, and it's aggressive. So, yeah. Just handle your reptiles. Do it. Okay? I don't care what your occupation is. Handle your reptile whenever you get the time to. Because it'll make such a difference in their behavior. If you... So, yeah. If you liked and enjoyed the video, then you could consider liking and subscribing. Maybe turn on post notification. If there's a reptile you want uh, some care facts on or kind of like a care guide on. You can comment down the reptile down in the down in the comments. I will leave the comments on. on. And yeah, uh, the next video will be made on a leopard gecko, on leopard gecko care. So if you want to see that, I would suggest turn on post notifications so you can get notified when I post that video. That was all, all for this video. I'm Naomi, and this is Naomi's Reptile Care. Say bye, Sai Sai. Say bye.